Hello, my name is Jose Antonio Orduño, and I will talk to you about the history of the Pax. Pax originated in China, dating back to the Han Dynasty. Some historians believe that they are related to the Tibetan Mastiff. They were prized by the emperors of China and lived in luxurious accommodations, sometimes even being guarded by soldiers. Pugs are one of these three types of short-nosed dogs that are well known to have been bred by the Chinese, the lion dog, the Peking geese, and the Losis, which was the ancient pug. Some think that the famous food dogs of China are representations of the ancient pug. Evidence of pug-like dogs have been found in ancient Tibet and Japan. In the later 1500s and 1600s, China began trading with European countries. Reportedly, the first pox brought to Europe came with Dutch traders, who named it the Brit Mosfond, a name is still used today. Pox quickly became favorites of royal households throughout the Europe, and even played a role in history of many of these families. In Holland, the pox became the official dog of the House of Orange after a pox reportedly saved the life of William, Prince of Orange, by giving him a warning that Spaniards were approaching in 1572. When William of Orange went to England in 1788 with his wife, Mary II, to take the throne of James II, they brought their pox with them. It is known that buck pox existed in the 700s because of famous artist William Howard, who was a pox enthusiast. He portrayed a black pox and many others in his famous paintings. In 1785, Goya also portrayed pox in his paintings. As the Pax popularity spread throughout Europe, it was often known by the different names in different countries. In France, it was called Carlin. In Spain, Doguillo. In Germany, Mops. And in Italia, Caganquillo. Marie Antoinette had a pug named Mops before she married Louis VIII and the age of 15. Another famous French woman, Josephine Bonaparte, had a pug named Fortin before she married Napoleon Bonaparte. Yet, she was confined at the Scarlet Prison. Since her beloved pug was the only visitor she was allowed, he would conceal messages in his collar to take her family. In the late 1800s, pugs were standardized as breed with two lines becoming dominant in England. One line was called Morrison Line and reportedly was found upon the royal dogs of Queen Charlotte, wife of George III. The other line was developed by Lord and Lady Willowbleedy de Resby and was founded in dogs imported from Russia and Hungary. Pugs were first exhibited in England in 1861. The stud bug began in 1871 with 66 pugs in the first volume. Meanwhile, in China, pugs continued to breed the royal families. When the British overran the Chinese Imperial Palace in 1860, they discovered several pugs and brought, brought back some of the little dogs back to England with them. Top Pugs, David, Lamb, and Moss were brought to England. There were two poor, poor Chinese lines were bred and produced clack. Pugs became very popular during the Victorian era and were featured in many paintings, postcards, and figurines of the period. Often, they were deceptive wearing sight decorative colors or a large bows around their short, tight necks. Queen Victoria had many Pugs and also bred them. The Queen preferred apricot farm Pugs whereas another pug fancier, Lady Bracey, made black pugs fashionable after she brought some back from China in 1886. Pugs were introduced to the United States after the Civil War, and the bird was recognized by the American Kennel Club in 1885. At first, pugs were very popular, but they were, by the turn of the century, interest in the breed warned. A few dedicated breeders kept breeding, and after some years, the breed regained popularity. Founded in 1931, the Puck Dog Club of America was also recognized by the AKC that year. Hi, my name is Anayeli and I will talk to you about the highlights of the Puck. Pugs can be stubborn and difficult to house break. Create training is recommended. Pugs can tolerate high heat and humidity because of a short muscle. Air cools down when it passes through the noses of dogs with longer muscles before inserting the lungs. When your pug is outdoors, watch him carefully for signs of overheating. 
Pugs are definitely house dogs and should not be kept outdoors. Despite their short coats, pugs shed a lot. Pugs wheeze, snort, and snort loudly. Because their eyes are so prominent, pugs are prone to eye injuries. Pugs are greedy eaters and will overeat if given the chance. Science they gain weight easily. They can quickly become obese if food intake isn't monitored carefully. Pugs need human constant human companion. If you own a pug, expect him to follow you around in the house, sit in your lap and want to sleep in bed with you. Pug enthusiasm are a fun loving bunch. They love pug get togethers, pug parades and dressing up their pugs. To get a healthy dog, never buy a puppy from an irresponsible breeder, puppy mill or pet store. Look for a reputable breeder who tests her breeding dogs to make sure they are free of genetic diseases, that they might pass on to the puppies and that they have sound temperaments. Hi, my name is Elena and today I'm going to talk to you about the personality of the pugs. Don't expect a pug to hunt, war or retrieve. Pugs were bred to be companions and what's exactly what they do best. The pug craves affection and your love, and it's very unhappy if its devotion isn't reciprocated. He tends to be a sedentary dog, content to sit in your lap as you read a book or watch a movie. This doesn't mean the pug is a stick in the mud. Al contrary, he is a playful, comical dog that enjoys living it up and delights his owner with silly antics. Temperament is affected by a number of factors, including heredity, training, and socialization. Puppies with nice temperament are curious and playful, willing to approach people and be held by them. Choose the middle of the road puppy, not the one who's beating it up with his little mates or the one who's hiding in the corner. Always meet at least one of the parents. Usually, the mother is the one who's available to ensure that they have nice temperaments that you're comfortable with. Meeting siblings or other relatives of the parents is also helpful for evaluating what a puppy will be like when he grows up. Little every dog, the pug needs early socialization, exposure to many different people, sights, sounds, and experiences. When they're young, socialization helps ensure that your puppy grows up to be a well-rounded dog. Enrolling him with a puppy kindergarten class is a great start, inviting visitors over regularly and taking him to busy parks, stores that allow dogs and on least to least strolls to meet neighbors would also help him polish his social skills. Hi, my name is Sergio and I'm here to talk to you about how to take care of a pug. Though playful and rambunctious, the pug is a low maintenance companion, making a deal for all owners, because they're a small, quiet breed and relatively inactive when indoors. They are a good choice for apartment jewelers as well. Their compact package belies a great deal of energy, so expect to be entertained with some goofy antics if your pug doesn't get a walk or some playtime. They are sensitive to heat and humidity, however, so if you live in a hot or humid environment, be sure your pug doesn't spend too much time outside. Light sleepers may also want to invest in a pair of earplugs. Pugs are prone to snore.